On this episode of Tips from the Top Floor, I'll look at three very different methods to select the best photo from several that are equally good. The nerdy method, the work smarter method, and the get over it method. Also in this episode, what are your plans for May 2018? Stay tuned for an exciting announcement. This is Tips from the Top Floor, episode 803 for Thursday, December the 14th, 2017. Tips from the top, from the top floor. Hey and welcome, this is Chris Marquardt, you're listening to Tips from the Top Floor. And, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll go into software development later on, at least into algorithms and how you can use one of those for sorting through your photos. Um, Patreon, I talked about this at the end of last episode, that they had announced uh, to change their fee structure and how this would uh, disproportionately... Um, affect the one dollar patreons and or patrons, and um, that, <laughs> that, that whole announcement blew up in their face. So there was a huge backlash from the creation from the creators who use Patreon, even though that would have meant more money for the creators, but it was not fair to the to the patrons. And um, the the right thing happened. They they reverted back to their old fee model. Well, I think they, they hadn't really implemented it yet, but um, it will stay as it was before. That's the short of that story. So thanks for hanging in there. You're an awesome bunch. And again, I thank everyone who who supports Tips from the Top Floor on Patreon. Um, that is just, yeah, you, you are making a difference. So thank you for that. I will link to their blog entry if you're interested in... The reasoning, I will link to the blog entry um, in the show notes. New York City is a city that is near and dear to my heart. I've um, been there numerous times, held several workshops in New York City. Uh, it's it's great for, for street photography. It's great for architecture photography, uh, cityscapes. Uh, it's awesome for tilt shift photography for for playing with angles and architecture and and tilts and shifts of the camera and um i'll be back in may yep this is an announcement i'm partnering with canon uh, they have uh they have the best and most complete tilt shift lineup that i know of um, I don't know any other manufacturer who has uh, such a complete set of tilt shift lenses, and I'm uh, I'm a fan. You, <laughs> if you've listened to any other episode of this show, you know I'm a great fan. The 24 tilt shift is just my favorite lens. I have it on my full frame camera all the time, and they have just just a short while ago released three new tilt shift lenses: a 50. Uh, uh, a 50, a 135, and which one? Huh? There were three, right? I think a 90. Okay, so anyway, they they have a, I think they have five different tilt shift lenses now. And, well, you know how much I love tilt shift. And uh, I've just finished the book on wide angle photography with a bonus chapter on tilt shift photography. The book will be translated into English uh, over the next few months, I think. And um, let's just say, if I had to, if I had to choose one lens only to shoot with for the rest of my life, it would probably be the twenty-four tilt shift. So, long story short, I'm partnering with Canon Life Learning to hold the New York Tilt Shift Architecture and Street Photography Workshop in May 2018. Yeah, I know it's <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful, but. Um, it is a it is a tilt shift based workshop. Now, of course, it, normally if I did that, it would kind of limit the participation because it yeah not, not everyone has a tilt shift lens. I know a lot of people are curious about what, what's the big deal, and uh, but th those are not cheap lenses. <laughs> those are really I mean yeah you can get a used tilt shift a twenty four millimeter tilt shift Mark One for around 500 bucks. So they're not that expensive if you go used. But the, the nice thing about this workshop is that the gear is included. I mean, you don't get to keep it, but... Um, so each day of the workshop will feature like several interesting locations and subjects, instruction by 
yours truly, of course. Um, you'll get to work with Canon's wide-angle lenses, especially the tilt-shift ones, and uh, you'll you'll have opportunity to learn and to experiment with a good range of Canon bodies. Um, as far as I know, there will there will be like the 1D X Mark II and the 5DS and the 5DSR and the 5D Mark IV and the 6D Mark II and the ADD body. So they'll, they'll have an entire set of that there for participants to use during the workshop. And um, of course, there will also be people from Canon to support you with technical questions. And then at the end, you will even get a, a couple of professional prints or one or two professional prints of your work to take home um, that they do, of course, with a Canon Pro printer. They want to showcase their stuff there, of course. I would do that too. Um, yeah, but <clears throat> that's that's part of the workshop. So you don't, if you don't have a teal shift lens and you want to try out one, or if you want to learn what this is about and why Chris is making such a fuss about it, uh, that's the opportunity. A workshop in New York City. I think it starts on May the 11th. Um, Look it up on discoverthetopfloor.com. I'll have all the details there and the page explains things and then links to the to the Canon page where you will sign up. And uh, it's limited, of course. I think we're limited to, I don't know, 12 people maybe, maybe 14, but that, that would be the maximum. Um, so it's a... It's a it's a it's a it's a good sized group, and we will see interesting locations. Everything is on the website. May twenty eighteen, the New York City Tilt Shift Architecture and Street Photography Workshop, and uh, you get to play with a ton of gear. And I'll do my best to to help you get the most out of that. <laughs> When's the last time you had a photography question? Something that was in the back of your mind and you you were wondering, how do I do that? Or why, why would I do it this way? Why wouldn't I do it another way? This is the show where you get your questions answered. Pick up your smartphone, uh, hold it up to your ear like you're doing a phone call and speak into your voice recorder. Uh, that's, that's the way I do it. It sounds good and it's, uh, it's, it's, like, it's like you're talking to someone on the phone, which makes it easy to talk. I know it's not that easy for everyone, but trust me, I'll make this sound good. I'm doing my best here and I think I've done a good job so far. So get in your question, your observation, your feedback for the show and record it send it to voice at tfttf.com that's voice at tfttf.com i want to hear from you let me say a quick thank you to canvas people for supporting this episode of tips from the top floor christmas is coming there are family gatherings you're seeing friends and another year of celebrating your traditions that's a great time to make memories that you will all cherish for years to come and of course one of the outcomes of these wonderful gatherings are so many great photos and let's be honest many of them will end up somewhere on your smartphone on your hard drive in the cloud never to be seen again. Well, let's do something about that with a special deal from canvaspeople.com. Canvaspeople.com is an easy to use photo to canvas service that takes your favorite photo memories and turns them into beautiful artwork. Don't let that wonderful photo collect dust in your smartphone, in the cloud, somewhere where you never see it again. Bring it to life and hang it on your wall. A photo printed by canvaspeople.com is also a wonderful gift. All canvases are of the highest quality and made in the United States. Everything ships fast and with great attention to detail and they have served over 1 million happy customers. And here's the deal that they have cut for you. Do you know what you normally pay for their 11 by 14 canvases? 69.99 US dollars. Now here's a limited time offer that you can't ignore. They will give you one free 11 by 14 canvas. You just pay the shipping. Yep, that's a $69.99 value for free. And to get that amazing deal, just go to canvaspeople.com and use the offer code TOPFLOOR at checkout. That's canvaspeople.com, promo code TOPFLOOR for a free 11 by 14 canvas print. And I thank them for the support. Hi Chris, this is Alex from California. Thank you very much for putting out your uh, podcasts and now Anchor. 
and I do have an observation and a question about your 1,000 picks, one hour, one hour, 1,000 picks workflow, which is, by the way, great. And thank you very much for creating it and for making it available for free. I really appreciate it. I'm learning it. I'm trying to apply it with uh, variable success. And when it works best for me is when all the photos within, say, three, 400, I've never tried a 1,000, if I have up to 400 and if the photos are sufficiently different and they are easy to decide which ones I like, which ones I don't. When it's hard to apply is when I take several photos, 10, 15 photos of the same scene that are very similar, that I like equally, that are all more or less good or all good. It's very hard to pick one of those. And it the process of trying to decide between several equally good photos really makes me sleepy, it puts me to sleep. And that's nothing that you can fix. It's uh, something about my body, the way my body operates. Whenever I concentrate on something very hard, same thing happens to me when I drive for about half hour or when I try to play a word game on my phone for about half hour, it just makes me sleepy. So after half hour using your workflow, I become sleepy and I have to give it up. So my workflow has to be more like half hour rather than an hour. So that's that's an observation. Uh, the question is, if I have to pick between several photos that are equally good, should I do it at the first phase when I'm hitting the pick key, the P, or should I do it at the second step? Should I pick all the ones that are that look promising, that look good, reject the rest, and then when I'm doing the stars, one through three stars, should at that point I sit down and using the C, the compare mode, decide between which is a one star, which is a two, which is a three, and which should be rejected after all. I've tried it both ways. I find it equally hard. And after half hour of trying to do this, I fall asleep. Of course, you may give me a very good advice, which I can give myself, is not to shoot 15 versions of the same photo. And I will try to learn not to do that. But even if I learn not to do it in the future, I still have thousands of photos I've taken in the past that I have to go through and call through using your method that already have this uh, problem. I don't know if you have any uh, practical advice for me. Maybe the advice is to take all 15 and move on. But since I cannot post all 15 to Flickr or wherever I'm posting my best photos, I don't think that's a solution. Thank you very much, and I hope you have some help for me. Thanks, Alex. Um, yeah, it's a good one. Of course, you don't want to post all those 15 pictures on Flickr or somewhere else because that is super counterproductive. People will just give up on you. They will see the third almost identical picture of the same thing and they'll go, ah, no. and then they will, they'll never look at your photos again. So make, make a choice. That's, I mean, that's the goal. We want to make a choice of one photo and that should be the representation. The rest should not be seen, right? The rest should be in your drawer or deleted or just tucked away. Um, I did already answer that question on Anchor. Uh, Anchor.fm slash Chris Markward because you, Alex, called into Anchor, made a, made a call in. Thank you so much. I love the interaction on Anchor. Um, what I do there, just as, as a quick recap, I do a little, yeah, it's a almost daily little podcast, just a thought on photography, something very informal. Um, and if, if you prefer to listen to what I do on Anchor, well, you can use Anchor to listen to that, which is uh, its own player and its own like vehicle. You can do call-ins there, like you can interact, which I love. And thanks, Alex, for doing that. Um, uh, but I also every now and then click on make this into a podcast episode and then it comes out as its little own podcast that you can subscribe to in your podcast client. It's there. It's called Chris It Is. That's what I call it. Chris It Is. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> just... just to, if uh, kind of a, it, it's not the same stuff I do here. Um, I think tips from the top floor is a bit more expansive, a bit more in depth. Um, whereas that is more like, I'd say, I I think they call it snackable contact. So it's a little snack, a little photo snack here and there, and that's what I want to use it as. And let's see how it goes. But the more interaction I get from you guys, the more fun it is to do for me. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you there. Um, and I might bring some of those questions over into tips on the top floor to look at them into 
in more depth, but I'm still trying to figure all this out. But anyway, back to you, Alex. So, um... The short answer, short, blah. Let me try this one again. The short answer that I gave on Anchor was: um, if I shoot several pictures of the same subject or scene, I leave them in the selection process until it's time to apply the star ratings. But uh, the thing I didn't expand on was another reason for why I don't want to throw away those alternative versions. Um, and uh, yeah, I didn't talk about this on Anchor. Is I. I might have use for those photos down the road. And that is very specific to me and to my uh, to the way I work. Because I've just finished writing this the second book, the one on wide-angle photography, which, again, will come out in English sooner or later. I'll let you know here. And in the process of writing, uh, I'm, I have to make selections of and photos as well. And I'm often looking for like alternative versions of photos, maybe a version that I wouldn't choose to put to put out in an exhibition, but one that might illustrate something really well. So I guess the answer really comes down to your needs, to what you need. Uh, do, do you have a really good use case for those photos in the future? If that's the case, then the next question you'll have to ask yourself is, will I be able to find those photos? Because... I don't know, five years down the line, maybe. And that, that comes down to good metadata, good keywording, a well-structured set of collections in, in your Lightroom library. But <clears throat> again, this might not be your use case. Your use case might be very different from mine. And you, you alluded to the one hour, 1,000 pictures workflow, which um, I think the main goal of that is to reduce the, that underlying weight on your on your shoulders of those thousands of unsorted and unedited photos on your hard drive. So uh, it really depends on your use case. Now, here's one last note on your problem um, where you said, and I think that's your main problem, selecting between multiple equally good versions of the same picture. And, and <laughs> of course, yeah, you could take less photos, but um, let me give you three methods for this, three methods that you can use. The first one I call the the nerdy version, the programmer version. It's called, well, something similar to bubble sort. And if you've ever <laughs> if you've ever done any serious programming, uh, you'll be familiar with this method. And uh, it works for normally it it works for numbers. It, it's it's an algorithm in, uh, in in software development. It's a, it's used to bring a set of numbers into an ascending order. So like if you if you had a list of photo uh, a list of numbers three one five four two if you want to turn this into one two three four five a bubble sort um would be a way to do that even though not a very effective way but it's a way to get those in the right order and the way it does that is by comparing two numbers in the list it goes from left to right through the list and then it compares number one and number two though the ones on the first and the second index and then if the if they are already in ascending order, it'll leave them. If they're not, it'll swap them. It'll reverse them. And uh, then it does that with the second and the third and the third and the fourth and the fourth and the fifth and so on. And it goes through that list and swaps the numbers where needed. And then it goes through the list again and again and again until the list is sorted, until there's no swapping anymore. And that this way, step by step, the 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 the, the algorithm kind of bubbles the smaller numbers to the left and the bigger numbers to the right. That's what what's called bubble sort. Now you can do something similar. Okay, it's not quite exactly the same because that would be that would be ridiculous to do because it's a lot of steps. But you can do something very similar with your photos. And here's how it works. And keep keep in mind that your goal is to bubble up one picture out of the series of maybe five or ten. Um. Here, this is this is for the nerds. This is for the, for those of you who want uh, a recipe. Step one: compare any two of the pictures. And the way you would do this is select them in the grid and then look at them full screen and use the cursor keys to go back and forth, left, right, left, right, A B A B A B, and just compare them. Step two: trust your gut feeling and mark one of the two the one of the two that feels like it's the less good one of those. So you'll end up with one picture being marked. That's the one marked for, yeah, put it away somewhere. 
Step three, leave the unmarked one in the comparison and compare it to another unmarked one from that list. And go again, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, and then again, mark the one that's worse and so on. Repeat until you end up with one photo that is unmarked. That's your winner. It survived comparison with all the other pictures from that series. And that's, if I'm, in a, <laughs> if I'm not sure, that's what I do. A, B, A, B comparison until one is the winner. That's, that's, the, that's the one picture that's left over. That's method one, the nerdy version. Um, method two is the, um, how do you call this? The work smarter version. <laughs> As you said yourself, shoot fewer photos. It is perfectly fine to not be sure about a specific scene and take multiple pictures. I do that every now and then. But the moment you make that a habit, you are in the process of generating that mountain of work for later in the process. And that's very counterproductive and will add weight on your shoulders. And um, here's one way that I manage to reduce the amount of photos up front. Um, and that is by for training purposes, only for training purposes, using a medium that would force me to do that. And that is film. Yeah, I know, a lot of you don't want to hear that, but if you shoot film every now and then, it doesn't have to be all the time, you don't have to go 100% in, you don't have to play with chemistry, no, that's not what I'm talking about. If you shoot film every now and then, it's a wonderful teacher when it comes to moving those decisions to the front of the process instead of moving them to the end of the process. So, yeah, go go and get a $20 used SLR there out there on eBay or in, in some photo shops. Uh, 20 bucks, get a roll of color film and then play with that. Doesn't cost a lot and it works wonders for your process. And last but not least, method number three, and that's the get over it method. <laughs> if you're not sure, do it by decree. Just declare one of the photos to be the best. I do this every now and then. I have three photos and they are all like, yeah, I like this, but I like this and like that. Uh, and instead of showing all three, which we said earlier was counterproductive, I go, okay, you. <laughs> and I point to one of them and, and this is now the winner. If they're equally good, hey, that's pretty much the only thing you can do anyway. And, and, and then keep the others stashed away among the, your one or two star photos to never be dug up again. Uh, if I'm really not sure, that is what I do. All right, that was it for this episode of Tips on the Top Floor. Thank you so much for being here, for being subscribed. If you're not subscribed, go to... Stop everything now. Go to tfttf.com. There's a subscribe button. Or in your... Well, wherever, wherever you find your podcast, go and subscribe to the show. It's really the only way to go because then it will magically pop up in your podcatcher every week. You can also still help us name our robot over at thefutureofphotography.com. We're open until December the 24th. And if you're lucky, you will win a t-shirt with the cute robot on it uh, once it has its name. And of course, if you want to send in a question for the show, record it with the voice memo app of your choice. Don't be shy. It really doesn't hurt. And send it to voice at tfttf.com. That's voice at tfttf.com. Music for the show by Jeff Smith, Silent Partner, and Hans Peter Kagrid Publishing, and Slack Challenges by Release Pixie, Matt Raft at Arms. So don't forget the current challenge, Light. And of course, Slack Imitations by Chief Imitation Officer, CIO Russ. And I told you that you at My name is Chris Marquardt. Follow me on Facebook and on Twitter at Chris Marquardt. Chris M A R Q U A R D T. And of course, go out and take amazing photos, be nice to each other, and happy shooting. Mm -hmm.